and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are happy. A truly, truly, truly fantastic day today. Today's video is gonna be sort of a rant. Shout out to Sports and Fitness Rants. Uh, and it was kind of inspired not only by a video I saw by Uncut Hoops. Shout out to him as well. But also inspired by the post that I made a few days ago. And it was a post of Michael Jordan boxing out Gary Payton and Sean Kemp for the rebound. And uh, a lot of people commented on that post and a lot of people pointed out the look in the eyes of the players as they were waiting for the rebound to come down and it got me thinking about a lot of things but the main thing it really got me thinking about is uh <laughs> is how serious players used to be about the game of basketball I've made a lot of videos talking about the differences between the present era and the eras of the past, talking about the, the false uh, skill level that they try to claim that today's players are so much more skilled. And my argument is always, well, they haven't proved it because you've made the game easier. Uh, to me, you can't, you can't legitimately say they're more skilled unless they're playing under the same conditions as players of the past. Again, you know, how well can you dribble if someone can hand check you? If someone can literally put their hands on you? You know, how well can you score and finish at the rim when contact is allowed? You know, how well can you get to the rim, period, when there's no freedom of movement? So, you know, talking about the many differences, talking about the differences in mentality of the players today and the players of the past. I said, uh, you know, everything is relative. And when you talk about uh, the competitors of today, uh, like Anthony Edwards got a lot of uh, praise and criticism this season. And I will say, to me, you can classify him as one of the better competitors of the modern era. Uh, however, again, that's relative to the modern era. But if you're talking about the competitiveness of the modern era versus the early 2000s and 90s, well, it doesn't compare. I've talked about the differences in the passion for the game uh, between the modern era and eras of the past. Again, to me, you cannot convince me these guys are passionate about basketball when they are doing everything in their power to play as little as possible to get the most amount of money you can't that's not even logical sense to think that you can justify that in any kind of way again going back to michael jordan having the love of the game clause in his contract to say he can play whenever and wherever he wants <laughs> because i love the game you you're not gonna stop me because you're trying to protect your product you know, and again, that's part of Michael Jordan's greatness is he did have that passion for the game. He did have that need to play basketball and not be controlled and tell someone he can't play basketball. Going back to the injury uh, during the second season and the, the broken foot and, you know, and him fighting with management to come back earlier than what the doctor said he should come back. You know, that he wanted to play. Uh, going back to that same time, and, and the word is not only did they not want him to play because of the risk of re-injuring that foot, but also because they wanted to tank the season to get a better draft pick. You know, the front office was talking about, you know, just tanking the season to get a better draft pick. Michael Jordan says, to me, that just shows a losing attitude, uh, not only for the coaching staff but for the front office as well he wasn't having it he wanted to play michael jordan believed you play 
all the time and you play to win. So when you're comparing attitude and Michael Jordan is the extreme version of that. However, back then, players wanted to play. So when you try to compare that era to the modern era and you want to make every excuse and saying, well, it's just the team trying to protect their players and, oh, uh, well, it's not real. I've, I've heard this so much from the uh, mainstream media. Oh, well, it's, it's not really the players' fault. It's the, the, a lot of times the teams won't let them play. That is BS. You're the star player. You could throw your weight around if you want to. And if you actually wanted to play the way some of these players force other things that they want to happen, they force their way out of force their way out of situations uh, that they don't want to be in. You know, they force trades and force all these different things. But you mean to tell me that when it comes to sitting out, <laughs> you just don't have any control over that? They they said you can't play because you have a a, a spot on your knee that. <laughs> Uh, in the case of Bronny James, uh, trace swelling. What is that? Trace swelling. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so you cannot tell me that these players are just as passionate about the game when they do everything in their power to play as least as possible uh, to get paid the most money, to get paid more money in the history of the NBA while doing the least possible, you know, complaining about how long the season is, that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, you know, everything about the game used to be more serious. And when you watch the playoffs, again, I've told this story on another video, but I remember, you know, I was half sleep and, uh, and I had left YouTube on. It was running on the TV. And uh, this sound kept me from going to sleep. Like, I, I couldn't... Normally, I, you know, I, I can sleep through anything. It doesn't matter what, what's on. You can have music playing. Well, once I'm tired, I'm, I'm going to sleep. But whatever sound was coming from the TV was so much... was so intense that it kept me from sleeping. And, uh, you know, it was just like roar and, you know, just faint again because I'm, I'm kind of half sleep, but I can't get all the way back there. And it gets to the point to where I have to just open my eyes. I'm like, what is on the TV <laughs> that's keeping me from sleeping? And it was the playoff game between the Bulls and the Knicks. It was a playoff game between the Bulls and the Knicks. And the, the roar of the crowd was so intense. The comment commentating was so intense, was so serious that you, I mean, you just felt like something serious was happening on the TV screen. Like, I, I gotta wake up and see what what is this? You don't get that from the playoffs now. You know, and yes, the playoffs are more, um, the playoffs are more intense than the regular season, but half these players don't take the regular season serious anyway. Which goes back to the whole thing of uh, if you want to be truly great at something, then you have to um, you have to do that thing to your utmost best at all times. It starts at practice. This is what Michael Jordan understood. It starts at practice. Again, fanboys. There is no such thing as activating playoff mode. You are either in playoff mode all the time. You are either playing, giving your best all the time or you're never going to be as good as, um, as your potential. And so, yeah. And so, Uncut Sports, I was watching a video he did about Nick Wright. And Nick Wright basically saying the Dream Team was overrated. And Nick Wright is like tearing down the players, saying that, oh, well, Larry Bird was already cooked and Magic Johnson had just retired. And this kills me when these people do that because it's, it's so disingenuous. I mean, saying Larry Bird was cooked. I mean, Larry Bird had a horrific 
back injury. And, but despite that, Larry Bird still played great in the Olympics. Larry Bird had integrity. Larry Bird was not the kind of player who was going to get on the court and not give his absolute 100% best like most of these players today. I would take Larry Bird with a back injury <laughs> over a lot of these players today, especially in a team situation. I feel like Larry Bird in a team situation, even with a back injury, is going to be much more helpful than half of these players today. He talked about Magic Johnson retiring. Well, Magic Johnson didn't retire because he was old. We all know why Magic Johnson retired the first time, because of the whole HIV thing. So it's not like he just got old and retired. He retired. His career had cut short. So Magic Johnson... Uh, he wasn't on the decline. And so this when these commentators say stuff like that, it's just so disingenuous. But like I said, it's also part of what prompted this video because it just got me thinking like sports has become more about the narrative than the actual basketball game. So, yeah, your king was right. <laughs> it's just a game. It's just basketball. Because to, to everybody uh, in the basketball circle, it is. It's no longer about the game. It's about narratives. It's not about proving your worth as a basketball player. It's not about taking the game serious. And again, yes, of course it's just basketball. If you're talking about in the grand scheme of things, you know, as far as, yes, there are bigger problems in the world. But it's not just basketball in the sense that to me, when when you're doing anything that you are getting paid for, then you should do that thing seriously. You should do that thing to the best of your ability because it's not, it's it's about establishing habits. Again, Michael Jordan was great because he understood that anytime I do anything, you know, I'm I'm competing. I'm I'm com going hard at it and I'm doing it to the best of my ability. I don't care if it's practice or whatever. So, you know, this is really a good life lesson. It doesn't matter if you're working at McDonald's. If that's your temporary job on the way to somewhere, something better, then you do that job to the best of your ability. It's just about establishing the pattern of always giving your best. So, yeah, you know, these players today, you know, the, the podcasters, the whole, every player got a podcast. To me, it's ridiculous. It's like, I don't want to watch you play a game and then watch you come talk about it. <laughs> watch you come make excuses uh, later on <laughs> after the game or the next day after the game. You know, I, I don't want to see you playing the game, see you not playing defense, and then the next day I got to hear about the excuses. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, well, for, first of all, I was playing with a broken leg. And, uh, and then Anthony Davis... He, he really wasn't helping me. Uh, D-Lo missed the shot, but, you know, I always make the right play. So I'm going to continue to give him the ball even when he misses the shot because that's what I do. I always make the right play. <laughs> Not said, talking about anybody in particular, people. <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, you know, all these players are podcasters. And the funny thing is, like, they, they talk about the past eras being plumbers it's like so now we're in the era of podcasters you know well we're in the era of, of podcasters and a lot of these players i'm thinking like when i see you on the podcast i'm like uh you should be practicing <laughs> you you should be practicing you you, you were not playing defense last night uh you know uh, i don't even know anymore people but yeah like I said, you know, back back in the early 2000s, 90s, 80s, basketball was serious. It is is it is about the fact that understanding that you are in a privileged position because you are getting paid to do what you supposedly love. You're getting paid to do what you love, and the fans who support you are the reason. 
It is like not only are you do getting paid to do what you love, but there are people who invested in what you do. Like back in the day, you felt like the players were also playing for you. You know, again, Michael Jordan has said this on several occasions. He felt the because of the fans, he felt the need to play 82 games. Because of the fans, he felt the need to give his absolute best all the time. For the for the for the person who saved their hard-earned money, and maybe this is the only chance they'll have to see Michael Jordan in their whole life. They saved their money and they're at a Bulls game. Michael Jordan felt the obligation to give them their money's worth. Every time you see, uh, every time you step on that court, there may be a new person watching you and you want them to see the best. You want them to see the best version of you. And like I said, the, the commentators back in the day, they commentated in a serious way about the sport. You know, it, it wasn't all this clickbait type stuff that happens with the media now. Again, it wasn't just all about the narratives. It was actually about the game of basketball. And so watching the commentators, like you could actually learn something. Not only could you learn something, but you knew that they were being fair in their analysis of the game, at least. And they would fairly critique the superstars. Like, even Michael Jordan, I, you know, again, you fanboys try to act like LeBron James is the most criticized. No, LeBron James is the most protected superstar in the history of the game. Yes, did Michael Jordan get a lot of praise? Yes, but you, when they lost, it was Michael Jordan and the Bulls couldn't get it done. Michael Jordan's name got mentioned first when they lost. When they lost, it wasn't... Oh, well, you know, Steve Kerr and those guys, they they really could have helped Michael out more. <laughs> and that went for every superstar back then. If you were the superstar of the team, you could expect to get more of the praise, but you should but you could also expect to get uh the criticism. Whether you were Stark Stockton and Malone or Charles Barkley, you know, or Patrick Ewing, who received lots of criticism for the Knicks. Never being able to overcome back in those days. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to hold up here. Like I said, this is just kind of a rant just because, you know, seeing that picture and then hearing uh, the video from Uncut Hoops, it, it just made me realize that the NBA is just, yeah, I mean, we all know this. It, there's been tons of videos done, not only by myself, but everybody else about how much of a joke the NBA is now and I think it's just kind of really because like I said with LeBron James and the Lakers this season it, it's kind of been like the, the grand finale it, it, it's like wow how did we get here how did, how did we get here to where you know the Lakers who one of the most respected franchises in NBA history has become the ultimate joke and we know how we got here. Uh, LeBron James and Adam Silver. That, that's how we got here. We got here because the, the, they stopped taking the game serious and they started concentrating. It became more about the media circus around the game than the actual game. It became more about the Nick Wrights and Stephen A. Smiths and Shannon Sharps and all those people who, who really are the ones, who, and, and Skip Bayless, who really at the fo forefront of... Uh, the media turning into a circus. The media, you know, even I, I'll go as far as to say this. Even the whole thing with, you know, giving these players uh, um, nicknames that, you know, diminish them. You know, calling Russell Westbrook, West, Russell Westbrick and things like that. You know, to me like that, you know, to me, we don't have to do that. It, it can be. Why can't you just talk about the fact that Russell Westbrook had a bad game? But it's like even the whole nicknames thing has been part of this whole media circus turning into, like I said, it, it becomes about the narrative and not about the game anymore. And th this is why the game isn't serious. Uh, fanboys, like I said, you know, your king is the GOAT of 
ruining the NBA, <laughs> along with Adam Silver. The, the goats of ruining the NBA and uh, of making the game not serious anymore. And, you know, if if the people who are in charge of the game don't take the game serious, why would anyone else? How could you expect anyone else to take the game serious? But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. All right.